Hi guys, welcome to part three of our cruising tips in the Caribbean. For those that haven't seen our cruising tips so far, where we covered the Med and the Atlantic Crossing, this is a series that we put together in the hope to give you the information we wish we had before we started cruising some of these areas. And just some really helpful tips on logistics, things like where to get food, where to get water, what are the best places, what kind of boat supplies you might need, how you could prepare your boat better for those places, and to maybe give you a little bit of a comparison between those different areas. Because we haven't cruised the entire Caribbean or the entire Mediterranean, these are snapshots. So if you haven't checked out the ones so far, check out our ones on the Mediterranean, check out our ones on the Atlantic crossing. We're gonna dive into the Caribbean. And after that, we're gonna cover like Panama, the Galapagos, the Pacific crossing, uh, French Polynesia, uh, all the way back to Oz. So yeah, I really hope you find these videos interesting, informative. If you have any questions, comments, chuck them in the comment section below as we're going through the movie. Make sure you give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So guys, let's jump in. So we found it pretty easy in the Caribbean to fill Avalon up with water. I would say there was definitely varying degrees of quality of water. And I'd really recommend again, getting some kind of water filter either before it comes in the boat or like a tap one. Um, because yeah, some of the water quality was not that great, but it was generally quite good. It certainly wasn't as readily available as the Med, but there was always one place on each island that you could take the boat and fill up. That's a luxury we are now feeling now that we're in the South Pacific and we have not been able to fill the boat up via a hose and it's all been via jerry jug. Um, but yeah, it was always available on every island in the Caribbean. Something we weren't prepared for was paying for the water. We definitely got complacent after being in the med with free water in almost every marina. We were paying between say 10 and $70 to fill Avalon up with water. And we generally take on about 500 liters. So be prepared to pay for water when you're there in the Caribbean. We could definitely start to see the value of a water maker. Uh, it was something that we chose not to invest in, instead upgraded our storage of water. But it was the beginnings in the Caribbean that we could see the value in a water maker and even more so now in the South Pacific. So if you're thinking about a long voyage, I could definitely recommend investing in the water maker because it'll definitely make life easier and definitely pay dividends down the road. But hey, everyone's got a budget. We didn't see it fitted into our budget um, and we've been doing fine without one. But hey, it would definitely make life easier. The fuel price throughout the Caribbean also really differed between islands, but the French islands were definitely the cheapest. Again, there was a dock on every island that you were able to take your boat up and fill up with diesel there. Again, a luxury we didn't realize we weren't gonna have here in the South Pacific, where again, we've been filling up the boat with jerry jugs now for quite a few months. So take advantage of that and enjoy that while you can. One thing we did find a little more tricky in the Caribbean was filling up our gas bottles. Because we came over with European tanks, not every island had the right adapters or fittings to refill the tanks. But we did manage to refill in places like St. Lucia, Martinique, and the BVIs. And again, it was varying amounts. Gas was actually really quite expensive in comparison to what we paid in the Med and even here in the South Pacific. So I think gas was probably the most expensive part of our provisioning. Um, so yeah, be prepared for that and where you can try and stock up with the cheapest, which again was the French islands. The other thing is, be really onto them about how much gas you're getting because we were definitely getting bottles back that were not full. It was actually kind of hard to gauge how much you were getting. And one tip I'd have is if you can get some of those like little luggage scales, that would really make a big difference because you could actually weigh the bottle. You know, if you know that you have a three kilo bottle or two kilo or nine kilo, you can actually weigh that and make sure you comes back and show them, like show them before and after. And that way you'll get your full gas bottle because we definitely got gas bottles back that were not 100% full. And I do feel like we kind of got a little ripped off. But hey, that's just a tip um, to make sure you guys don't get ripped off. With all this burning of fossil fuels, it's also a good opportunity to talk about renewable energy 
we found our solar was doing really well in the Caribbean, not as well as the med, which was interesting. And I put that down to being, because we were often in the lee of the islands, it was often quite cloudy in the lee of the islands. And therefore, we did, quite, we did have quite a few sort of cloudy days, which I think affected our solar. But in general, it performed pretty well. The best source for renewable energy in the Caribbean, though, is definitely a wind generator. Because you have these trade winds blowing, say, 15 to 25 knots consistently all day, every day, everyone who had wind generators were fine. Our friends on Geo didn't run their engine for weeks because their wind generator was just pumping out so much electricity. We wish we had one. We should have invested in one, and we didn't, and we're kind of kicking ourselves since because that would have definitely been the place to use it. Um, but yeah, if you have the option and you already have a wind jenny on your boat, it's going to be a great place for it. Here's a new topic that we didn't cover in the Mediterranean and it's one that we need to cover now that we're in the Caribbean and that is security and safety. You know, when we were in the Mediterranean, there weren't many times that we ever felt unsafe or there was reports of theft or things like that. The Caribbean's actually a little bit of a different story and it definitely traces back to my original comments on the poverty that you will see throughout the Caribbean and a lot of it is simply just via desperation and opportunistic crime, but it's definitely something you need to be aware of. We definitely recommend always locking your boat before you leave it. And at times, if you feel it necessary, even locking your boat at night when you're on it. We didn't actually lock our boat at night when we were on it until we were down in like Panama and some spots in the San Blas. But in the Caribbean, we definitely know some friends and other cruisers that were doing it. And that was simply through reports of other people being boarded at night, which is a pretty scary prospect. Some places are better than others. I would say the islands that have been hit hardest being like Dominica and whatnot are probably the places you wanna be a little more careful than others. Definitely also be raising your dinghy at night. There was quite a few dinghy thefts about. And anything that can be easily grabbed, think about fishing rods or surfboards or things that you might have on the lifelines and things that people can simply grab. Make sure you pack all that stuff away, make it as hard as possible and uninviting as possible for the opportunistic crime. Thanks for watching part three of the Caribbean. Guys, if you've enjoyed these videos, please give us a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below for me and for the other cruisers out there if you have any other comments, questions, queries, or information that could help other people. Make sure you drop it below. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe now to allow notifications for more of these movies. And if you want to support the journey, consider becoming one of our patrons and supporting us through that. I really hope you're enjoying these and I hope you're looking forward to the next ones coming out soon. Until then, bye guys.